Welcome back to Flying Dirty. On this episode, we're going to talk about a few things, including the uh, True Track Autopilot, which is the Aero Cruise 100 Autopilot now. Welcome back to Flying Dirty. So, uh, on this episode, we're going to talk about a few things, including the uh, True Track Autopilot, which is the Aero Cruise 100 Autopilot now. I've had this Autopilot now for uh, over a year and a half, so I've been using it quite a bit. There's some things I like about it. Obviously, I like it more than not having one. Including for these long cross country trips, uh, they're very, very, very useful. Uh, I used to do these cross-country trips before I had the autopilot, and it was very fatiguing. So having an autopilot really, really helps. All right, so let's talk about the True Track autopilot, and perhaps we'll talk a little bit about the Dynon. So I bought the True Track because it was the next best thing. Uh, I was stuck on the Dynon system. I, lo I love this setup. And I, at first I was going to get the Garmin G3X, but after seeing what Dynan can do in the Avidyne, and after seeing the setup that you can also do with your iPad, I just really liked Dynan. Now most people have a problem with the uh, D10A because they have it on this side, and if the sunlight hits you from uh, the left angle, then I guess the brightness of the D10A is not really all that great. So I put mine down here as a result, uh, and, and from here okay, and other people, and I have not had a problem with mine. I mean, right now, my display, the brightness is great. I haven't had an issue with it, so, uh, so I'm glad I put it down here. So the autopilot, the one thing I don't like, first of all, is this. Okay, autopilot altitude limitation, 700 feet AGL. So if you're doing an instrument approach, which you can pr pretty much only do an instrument approach with the autopilot if you're only doing vectors because you can't do a coupled approach yet, not legally anyway. It'll do it and it'll do a GPS approach perfectly. I've done a couple of practice ones. Uh, you, can, you can do them and, and, and it works great, but it has not been approved yet by the FAA. So TrueTrack has been waiting for years. Uh, when I first bought it, what I was told is that within about that year, they would have it approved, but I'm not sure. I guess because of COVID and everything, uh, everything has been delayed. So it's not approved yet, as far as I know, for GPS approaches. Now, like I said, it will do them, but it hasn't been approved by the FAA. So that being said, you can only do approaches down to 700 feet. And again, I'm not sure why. Maybe that's another thing that comes with the uh, FAA approval. Once they approve it, I'm pretty sure they'll remove that as well. But right off the bat, those are the two things I don't really like because I do fly instrument. So on the positive side, I'll hand fly an approach, which will keep me up to speed on that. But on the downside is, you can't get the autopilot to do it for you in IFR conditions and in actual instrument conditions. So, so right off the bat, that's the big negative on the autopilot. The other negative on the autopilot is climbing. If I set this autopilot to climb, like right now I've got it set at 500, and uh, if I have it set at a VS speed of 500, You'll struggle to do that. The VSP just really doesn't work all that well. Even if she's trimmed or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, it just doesn't work that well. At least for me anyway. So what I do is I hand fight until I get to my assigned altitude and then I set the autopilot. And once you do that, she'll hold. I mean, look at this, 9,000, 9,000. She's holding perfect. 
she'll hold and she'll follow the GPS like it's on tracks. The other thing I like about the autopilot is, uh, here, let's set it to Avidyne. So I have to switch here where I can control it from the Avidyne or the Skyview. Okay, so let's set it over to Avidyne. There we go. And there you go. So now it's working out of the Avidyne, holding at 9,000. And it shows us our tracking of 124. So that's one of the things I like about it is that if I were to lose my GPS or if I was to lose my Dynon, then the autopilot will work by itself. Okay. So now let's switch it now to the Avidyne. So if you put it on GPSS mode, now it's working through the Avidyne. All right. So whatever flight plan I have on the Avidyne, that's what it's going to do. Now, the, the thing is, though, that since it's not approved for a couple approaches yet, and you can only do uh, an approach on its own, okay, not coupled. So you can, you can still track it, follow your tracks and everything according to your charts, and you can even select your altitude so you can descend and all of that based on whatever the charts are. So you could do that, but that defeats the purpose. This is a true standalone autopilot. Two zero whiskey, change my frequency one three four point zero. And two zero whiskey one three four point zero. Number two zero whiskey, the liberal altimeter is three zero zero four. Three zero zero four three six two zero whiskey. One thing I really like about this autopilot as well is that now if I switch it to Skyview, I have the Skyview on GPS, right? So if I have the GPS, so it's going to be communicating. The GPS will communicate with the Dynon. So if I put it on Number Skyview, golf center. just wait for it a while. It'll go back to self mode, and then and then you just click mode, and it'll go to Skyview, but also GPS. So now it's working the GPS and Skyview, and what that means is I can control my altitudes now from my altitude control. So, so, so if I do altitude, it'll control my altitude. So I like this because I can just control my altitude from here, okay, and I don't have to set them twice. For example, if I had it on GPS, in order to set the altitude, I would have to set it here, and then I would have to set it here as well, because from here it doesn't communicate directly uh, to the Skyview. But now having it on Skyview, all I have to do is change the altitude here, and it'll change here as well. And my VS as well, it'll capture it on the true track. So that's the positive. That's what I like. Uh, now, so if I click on this until it, it turns off like that, now I'm, I'm controlling my autopilot with the heading, okay, with the heading bug. But I don't want to do that, so let's go back to uh, GPS. So, going back to GPS, she'll fly the GPS flight plan, just like we have here on our display and on our Avidyne. But by clicking on this, like I just did, I can also control not only the altitude, but I can also control the track. So, so those are the features that I pretty much like from the True Track. It's worthwhile if you're not doing a lot of instrument flying, but if you're doing a lot of instrument, then this will not be the autopilot for you. I was waiting on Dynon to come up with their uh, autopilot, but I think that because of COVID, not only uh, True Track is delayed or whatever it is that they need approval from the FAA, but so is Dynon. So, COVID has just made a lot of things uh, more inconvenient, I guess. But that's what we're going through. So anyway, guys, that's what I wanted to talk about on this particular episode. And uh, we're still on our way to Dallas from our previous episode. So again, since it's a long flight, we're going to break some episodes down and break them into topics. So that way they can be more useful for people, as opposed to having a, a long video and talking about multiple things. So it'll be pretty cool to take these few days. And uh, and anyway, we're going to break them down and we're going to talk about certain topics. So for right now, we're going to stop the cameras here. We're going to recharge the batteries and then we'll catch it back up on our next episode. So stay tuned for that. Take care. Stay safe. Have a great day, my friends.